Last week, Garry Kasparov beat Nigel Short in the Times World Chess Championship, which means Kasparov is the best chess player in the world. Or maybe not. This week, Carmen went to America to meet Kasparov's greatest rival. Just outside New York, locked away in this laboratory, is the greatest threat to Kasparov's supremacy. Murray Campbell, Feng Shang Shu and Joseph Horn are a team of mediocre chess players. They don't mind me saying that, but they believe they'll beat Kasparov, or rather, their computer will. I think that's, that's a chess is absolutely unique uh, field to, to compare our abilities. And this match will answer many questions that every single person now have, not only about the computer's threat to, to, you know, to, to, to our, our superiority, human race superiority, but also we can get some answers on the, on the maximum ability of, of, of the human being. Ever since computers were invented, scientists have been trying to teach them to play chess. Now, chess strategies are actually very difficult to program, but now, for the first time ever, the world's best chess computer, Deep Blue, stands a very good chance of beating the world's best human. Deep Blue is an exercise in speed. If you, if you look at a chess game, there, there, on average there's 40 moves you can make. And after that there's 40 replies, and after that there's 40 more moves you can make. And, and before you're all said and done, Deep Blue's going to look at 100 million positions in the time it takes to, to decide what move actually to make in the chess position. Now, a human couldn't look at that many positions in his lifetime. Even if it's a powerful machine, even if the machine makes a billion moves a second, or it uh, can foresee everything, we still have our own abilities that will be never overrun by uh, 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 artificial intellect. We are making a new chip, and within the new chip, there's going to be a new machine, which will surge a thousand times faster than the current machine. And that should be able to make Casper sweat. Playing with a machine, the human being uh, will have to use the, quite a different strategy. I mean, we have to um, rely on something that I call computer psychology, because there is something that you can call psychology of the machine. Machine is, is doing something that you can probably predict. And uh, that's why if you, uh, if, if I am or a, a, another chess player, if, if we are capable of using our advantages, which is anticipation, intuition, uh, uh, imagination, the machine will be always in trouble. Now we believe with advances in technology, it's just a matter of time before Deep Blue can beat Gary Kasparov. Probably ultimately computer will beat human being, but I believe that as long as I'm playing, that will not be the case. Despite Kasparov's optimism, the odds are that he's heading for a match that he'll lose. Now, for IBM, the company who built the computer, that'll be a big PR coup, but it doesn't mean that Deep Blue is intelligent. The truth is that for all its image as a test of intelligence, chess can be tackled by using brute computing power. A much better test is the ancient oriental game of Go, a game where, reassuringly, human beings are still vastly superior. Harold Lee is one of Europe's best Go masters and he's playing one of the best Go computers. Hi. H how are you getting on? Hello. Yes, well, um, quite easy. I think this computer is quite weak, actually. Oh, really? Right. And I'm winning quite easily. Good. How, how does the game work? Well, it's um, all about surrounding territory and playing on the intersections and making shapes. For example, white is trying to um, surround this bit and trying to make some territory, whilst black is trying to surround this bit and make some territory over this side. Now, shapes, that's something that a computer would find more difficult than logical steps that you have in chess. Are there other in things this, uh, that make it more difficult? Yes, for example, well, if you compare with chess, uh, this is obviously a much bigger board. And in fact, there are 361 intersections. If you compare that with only 64 squares, it means, it means there's a lot more combinations possible on such a big board. And what about the rules? Is it complicated? Actually, it's quite simple. In fact, um, you can play this uh, stone anywhere and there's a very open board. That's why it's very difficult for computers to grasp it because there are almost no rules to it. There are so many options, it's difficult for them yes, to... Yes, the rules themselves through. are very simple. Well, I know they're trying to build a Go uh, Grandmaster computer. How do you think they're going to get on? Well, um, I think... Um, so actually, someone has offered um, one and a half million dollars to produce a program that will be strong enough to beat someone like me. And, uh, um, 
I think, um, unlike Kasparov, the money is going to be quite safe. Ah, well, good luck to them. Thanks very much. Thank you.